One thing that makes life on Earth possible is a thin layer of gases called the atmosphere. It holds in the air we breathe and protects us from the cold of outer space. When energy in the form of light reaches us from the sun, it streams through the atmosphere, making plants grow and lighting up our days. In addition to light, the sun also delivers heat, which warms the planet. But much of that energy is reflected back towards space. Fortunately, though, the Earth's atmosphere works like a blanket, preventing a lot of heat from escaping. In fact, if the Earth didn't have its atmospheric blanket, its average temperature would be about minus 18 Celsius, or zero Fahrenheit. Brrr. Thanks to the atmosphere, the Earth's average temperature is a much more livable 15 Celsius, about 59 degrees Fahrenheit. One of the gases in Earth's blanket is called carbon dioxide, or CO2. Carbon dioxide is everywhere on Earth, actually, and it's an important part of Earth's delicate balance of life. Oh, well, delicate sounds, balance of life, well, CO2, yeah, you know. Sounds I mean, so romantic, doesn't it? It's as if uh, you can't get away from CO2, yeah, isn't I mean, it? You know. What makes me laugh with that video and that is they say that um, the Earth's blanket, and yet really the only time it's, there's a blanket over the Earth is cloud cover. Cloud cover, yeah, because yeah, just... when, when it's a clear sky, it tends to be colder and it, things would just go out. But well, heat, you'd get a greater heat loss. Lost, yeah. Whereas when you've got cloud, cloud cover, cover, you've got um, you've got that um, that ability to keep the heat in. Yeah. Yeah, but he's so it's warmer. But this guy is specifically only talking about the gases, the CO two, the oxygen, the sure. nitrogen that make up the atmosphere. Yeah. Well, I liked it how he said about uh, about uh, what is it the. Uh, the uh, or oh, the temperature without the blanket. Oh right, without yeah. the blanket, yeah, the, blanket, the gas yeah. blanket. It would be uh, like um, minus eighteen. Minus eighteen, and I'm thinking, but well, how do they know this? How yeah. can they actually arrive at that figure when they've not done anything to try it? But they've not removed the so-called blanket from the earth yeah. to know what temperature it would be. Yeah, I know. Yeah, you know, it's just ridiculous. It's all going in, coming out of man's imagination, yeah. isn't it? Which is mainly out of their backside. Yeah. Uh, you can be very intelligent and very good at what you do, and you can still be stupid. back again annoying people with our views and opinions because oh because loads of people really dislike hearing other people's views and opinions absolutely of course especially yes. if if um you're talking to someone and they're saying that they've got um or you've heard that they're getting they've got prostate cancer yeah and um what are you tell them you're going they're going no, they're going to die no but you t you tell them that you you put it down to too much too much masturbating too much masturbating and someone um, <laughs> their friend who's with them would say that they put it down to too little use of it oh little use or lifestyle or other another part of their lifestyle yeah, no, yeah. Diet or something. but then is the person who's got the prostate cancer are they actually going to say that they've been masturbating too much sure well that's it that's a, mm. yeah i mean a lot of people think masturbation is kind of uh quite healthy for you i mean society oh, right, yeah. i've read some web pages where that say that masturbation is quite quite healthy and yeah. i'm thinking that's a total load oh, of bollocks rubbish. all it, they only say that to justify the sheer number of people who do it basically yeah and regard it as being normal behavior well, there's no difference so it's it, dysfunctional behavior yeah but it's no different to say for them in saying, my opinion anyway it's no different for them saying that it's good to have uh, rust in your uh, food and iron, iron. Uh, no, nothing wrong with having yeah, iron metal wrong with in your food metal in your, or in your food calcium stuff. chalk yeah. in your in your food as well in your yeah. bread yeah once it yeah. goes into your body you can't get it out either. absolutely and then people people moan why they get get kidney stones and gall stones and all these other stones oh right yeah. the rolling stones, stones. Oh, you right, know yeah. 
and all this mm. lot. But, uh, you know, you begin to realise that there's so much, uh, well, in our opinion, of course, there's so much rubbish in man's society, in the yeah. globe society, that, you know, we, we tend to uh, avoid it and as much as we possibly can, don't we? Absolutely. Because that's the only way we can keep our sanity. Because as soon as you We've start getting it. involved in uh, the globe society, in man's world, you begin to realise that a lot of people in it are mad. Mm. They're literally insane with the things they come out with that they think are true, but they can't be proved to be true at all. Mm. I was talking to somebody the other day about the Queen, the monarchy. All right. And uh, I was saying that, uh, no, um, I said, that, no, the Queen's got... Uh, Got got a lot, quite a lot of clout in the country, of course. Yeah. And he said, "Oh no, the Queen. She, they only she only does a the monarchy just has a ceremonial role. That's all." And I'm thinking, right, okay. So why is it called Her Majesty or His Majesty's Government, HM Government? Oh, oh, because that... why is it that every person's birth certificate is has the has the crown on copyright. the copyright copyright crown copyright, copyright yeah. on it land registry everybody's home. Land registry has crown copyright, crown yeah, yeah. the crown on it. Yeah. You've got MPs; they swear an allegiance to the monarchy, not to their constituents who vote who elect them in. And what else? Every time you go to a court of law, it's got the crown symbol, yeah. oh, and emblem the, on uh, the, on above the judge. Uh, and the MPs, Gordon Hort, <clears throat> and the MPs um, are work in the a palace. Oh, who owns the palace? Well, it's a crown it's property. Crown property, isn't Absolutely. it? Of course, it's not the like... MP's property. And also, in order for there to be a session of Parliament, there has to be the mace present, Absolutely. lying on the bench, encased there. in that in that uh, perspex box. Yeah, without that mace, there's no Parliament. Uh, I know it's it's ridiculous. So this guy who thinks and who owns the mace. Crown property. Crown property. I know this guy who thinks that the monarchy Mad. only doesn't have any any say in uh, government governmental affairs or what goes on in the country. You know the guy's mad. Yeah, I know. Yeah, well, it especially when when he's got the evidence and the proof staring him right in the face every day. If he was to go to a court, there'd be the, there'd be there it would be there. Yeah, it's, the, yeah. it's, it's ridiculous. It's so you know. different too. All of the MPs are her ministers. They're Liz's ministers. They're Liz's lords. Yeah. The whole system. She can abolish the whole system if she wanted to. Hmm. If she wanted to, she could abolish Parliament. Yeah. And she said, oh, "I'm taking control over running the country." Yeah. You know, nothing you can do about it because then, you've you've given me the power to do so. And then you have the people, that woman on question time, and then she says, "She says, we pay for you. We pay your wages." Yeah, Talking I know. Yeah. Talking to MPs on the panel, we pay for you. It's our money. You're supposed to work for us. <laughs> yeah, you know these the, people. These the, people. A lot of people are wandering around the country with mental health problems, yeah, I know, with yeah. a very skewed understanding of the real world in which they live. Yeah, I you know. know. Yeah. So it's, 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 it's the title of this video. We see we could have renamed this video "Beyond Politics Lies the Real World." Absolutely, yeah, because politics is a load of rubbish. Because that's all. It's all. It's everything said in a way to put everything in good light. Yeah. Anyway, let's oh, not no, talk no too MPs much about have been, No MPs have been doing. Uh, been corrupt. No, we, we, corrupt. Well, I believe that the Conservative the right Party honourable is an, fellow man absolutely, is, an, is a just party. You know. Yes. Okay, just so, uh, just because a few a few MPs haven't abided by that, and they've done a few corrupt things, the the Conservative Party oh. is not corrupt. Well, anyway, come on. But anyway, um, what have we got on for everyone's displeasure for tonight, then, Peter? <clears throat> well, for everyone's displeasure, we're gonna we're gonna quickly we're gonna ask people about whether what someone is doing with old motherboards and graphics cards is actually recycling. So we're going to put, we're going to ask viewers that question. Yep. We're going to have a look at. Uh, we've got some more CO two demos for everybody. Because yep. like the bloke said at the beginning of the video, <clears throat> CO two is all around us. Apparently, it's all around us. All around us. So we should be able to detect it. Absolutely, we should be able to detect it there. Absolutely. So we're going to have a look at that. We're going to have a look at high bypass turbo fans, courtesy of the one. The one who gave us a link to a video, which is quite an informative video on how. 
a jet engine works. We've got some moonlight videos from Harmon, from Harmon, and uh, from um, um, Jeremy Beckman gave us a link to a video from the flat earther. Uh, that a, a little demo that a flat earther carried out, talking about talking how about how moonlight, moonlight has a cool, cool, cooling effect. effect. So we're gonna have a look at that as well. We're gonna have a little look at that. Yeah, so we're gonna have a look at that, and we're gonna have a look at this. Beyond science lies the real world. The real world. That's because science is imaginary. And science is there to cover the real world. Mask. The real world. Absolutely. In, in lots of claims that cannot be proved to be true. It's like you could, you could walk into a hospital. Yeah, you could walk into a hospital and you could walk in there and you can say to someone, or you could ask a nurse or a doctor, say, where's the oxygen? Where's the oxygen? And I, you, you'd be, if I walked into a hospital and I said, where's the oxygen? I'd be looking for a cylinder or an oxygen concentrator or some kind of, um, um, you know, machine, machine a PS press wing absorption machine out the back. <clears throat> you know, yeah. that's what I'd be looking for. But you wouldn't be able to see any oxygen. I won't be able to see any oxygen. Whereas the doctors and the nurses and a lot of the patients as well, they'd be thinking, well, there's oxygen here. They we're breathing it in. Yeah. Get yeah, it? No, yeah. And you think, you know, that's, that's the big difference. You know that's the big difference. We, we live in. We tend to live in the real world, don't we? Well, yeah. Well, well, the guy, the guy the, in show, in the guy who was in the video narrating the video at the beginning was clearly uh, led to understand that there's nitrogen, oxygen, argon, and CO two. CO two, all around us that make up the atmosphere. Absolutely. So around us, oh, in there, in my hand is some CO two. Mm. Okay. Sure. But uh, we're having problems trying to detect it. So we've also got some. Um, we're also we're going to revisit our hydrogen carbonate indicator solution. Absolutely, of course, yes, because we've. Well. Um, mm. It's great stuff, actually. Yeah, yeah, it's wonderful stuff. It's wonderful. Especially for not detecting CO two. Uh, I, I mean, hydrogen. That's the trouble. They they make all this uh, stuff like hydrogen carbonate indicator solution, and it can basically debunk the whole claim that. Um, CO2 is an, a constituent of the air. Right, okay. Do you not think? Yeah. It's, it's ridiculous, isn't let's it? Let's have a look at some... Uh, so what first then, Peter? <clears throat> on, let's have a look at some uh, combustion of a uh, jet Combust engine. Combustion of the jet engine. A combustor. Now, yeah, the one gave us this uh, video, a link to this mm. video. Was that, oh, engine. wait there. Oh, cool, that's... Cool, dear, oh dear. Um, airplane Tech Talk this was uh, uploaded by. Sorry, I had to get rid of that. Oh, it's no, quite a good why. video as well. Sure, that was a bit uh, scary, that was. His you're voice. Into, you're into anyway. your engineering. Now, would you like to set the scene then, Peter? Well, we have we, we hold the view. Well, it was some years back when some flat earthers, uh, uh, Jones, S. Jones, whatever S. C. His name, Jones, uh, C. Uh, came Jones, up with the, 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 the idea that jet aircraft don't use fuel. Yeah. On, on on their flights, they, yeah, they, they couldn't use, work out. They use well, yeah, they don't use fuel. Yeah, they couldn't reconcile the the uh, the the fuel storage available in aircraft um, compared to and the weight of that fuel compared to the actual you know the other specifications mm -hmm. like how thick the wings are, for example. Yeah, which are wafer thin, yep. and you think, well, how much, how you can't you can't really store a lot of fuel in those wings, so you know. Yeah, especially when you're talking tons, tons of fuel. fuel, tons. We're talking tons here. So anyway, <clears throat> we after researching kind of high bypass turbofan engines, which are the engines used on passenger jet aircraft, we came to the conclusion that in our view, and also given the properties of compressed air as well, yeah. we came to the conclusion that it's possible that they only use fuel as and when required. In other words, to increase the RPM of the turbines. They don't use fuel all the time from start to finish. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, they don't need they don't need to. That's our view. And um, we've got so the one gave us a, uh, a link to this video. And uh, we only need to listen to we the only first need to play few the first, seconds. first few seconds because the guy actually does support or give us an indication that supports our view, really. Yeah. So have a little listen to this and this horrible voice. Are you ready? The combustion chamber, or combustor, 
must contain the burning mixture of air, which is being passed from the compressor, and fuel, from the fuel spray nozzles, in order to generate the maximum heat release at a substantially constant pressure. So, so you've got to have the air, the compressed air, and the fuel to achieve the maximum heat, heat release, release. Uh, at a given at a given Con constant pressure. pressure. Yeah. So, in other words, basically, what what he's saying essentially is that in order to run that turbine at maximum thrust, you need fuel. Mm. But he doesn't say that you need it to use the fuel all, all the of the time. time. Absolutely, of course. All yeah, sure. Because it's our understanding that what's in other words, it's he, a possibility he, should, he didn't that what need. Happens, he didn't need to have said that it to, in order to run it at a maximum heat release. Yeah. You don't need to say that. For any heat release. For any heat. If you use fuel, then you just put fuel at any heat yeah. release. But he doesn't state that. Yeah. The video is quite informative because it does actually say that the air comes in, is guess, is compressed within the centre section of the engine. It's compressed to temperatures of like 600 degrees centigrade. So it's quite hot, and then it can it gets mixed with the fuel, which raises the temperature, and it has to be careful so that the 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 compressed air coming in to the combustor doesn't put out the fuel because the fuel's got to ignite as well. Oh, it could blow it. It could blow it out. It could blow it all out. Yeah, it could blow it all out. So they have to slow down the speed of the air intake of the air going into the combustor. Compressor. Yeah, and then it mixes with the fuel. Expands, gets hot, expands, and goes out. out. <coughs> out now, it's our understanding that if you can put, you can compress air considerably to quite high temperatures, and after contacting the compressed British Compressed Air Association or whatever, I think it was. Yeah, they sure. couldn't really give us any definitive temperature figure for the maximum amount it can, the maximum temperature. Uh, compressed, compressed air, air could reach. Could reach. So as everyone should know, if you compress the material, it gets hotter, and when it gets hotter, it gets compressed. The more it wants to expand, absolutely, or it will yeah. reach a point where it just wants to expand. And uh, also, a fire syringe would give ev everyone the uh, the uh, uh, kind of like uh, indication on how hot um, compressed air can get. You know, it can even <clears throat> uh, set a light to a piece of paper. Mm. Compressed air. Using the fire syringe, you know. Yeah, so you compress the air so much so that it wants to expand, expand. And then that expansion will help drive the turbine at the rear end of the engine, which, which in then, turn helps to drive the front. Absolutely, of course, to draw the air into in, the yeah. engine. So you've got kind of a, you've got a, you've got a good system there, you know. Yeah, sure, it makes because does make you think. Another thing is with with jet engine design, and that is they're always looking to make these things efficient. Yeah, and the only efficiency they can ever attain with these, and that's how much fuel they don't use. Oh, how much? Yeah, the reduction in fuel. fuel. Yeah. I wouldn't say it's reduction of parts and stuff because no. you, you your engine can be built to to last an awful long time. So it's not necessarily how much material goes into making it, but it's more to do with fuel efficiency. Consumption is to do with fuel consumption yeah. excuse me but you know that's our understanding it does seem quite feasible but if you know if anyone's got any proof out there that these yeah. things do need fuel all the time all the time then let us know and yeah, give us know, mr flibble put it in the uh, down below in a comment yeah. and uh hello yeah, hey ho away we go and we'll go and check it there out so that's that one out of the way what's but, next uh, like, like we started you know there is a link below for, if anyone wants to watch the video Absolutely, of course, yes. So that's uh, absolutely, of course. What's next, then, Peter? Let's go on the moonlight. Moonlight, moonlight becomes you. It goes with your hair. Must be for an old person, then, that video, that song. Well, moon, oh, yes, moonlight. an old song, isn't it? Well, moonlight's normally kind of whitish and it goes with your hair. Oh, right. White oh, hair. sure. White, white hair, grey. White hair, grey, yeah. Absolutely, of course. Now, yeah, now Jeremy Beckman um, saw a, a little conversation we were having with Harmon, and uh, he dropped in a link, which we followed up on, and brought us to this uh, this video here. Is Moonlight Cold? By Flat Earth Sun, Moon and Zodiac Clock app. Mm. 
Absolutely. It sounds complicated, that doesn't it? Do you not think? No, it's, it's, it's obviously selling an app. Sure, of course. But anyway, now the guy's got this little set up here. Here we go. There you go. He's got some, he's got some steps and he's hung a towel or a blanket mm. over the steps. And he's got uh, a set of, another set of steps that are lying on the side uh, like that. Yeah, and the you know, the idea of it is that the moonlight, which is beyond in behind you know, the the further ladders, distance, is shining, and then the cloth is stopping the moonlight from shining onto the one side, the right hand side of the yellow step ladders. Yeah, the narrow end of the yeah. steps. So what he does is that he goes. So wait, where's his video? Oh, there. Yeah, here. So here's his video. There's the that moon. Was, that was the moon. So he's got his laser thermometer. They see she got seventy four point one or seventy three point nine, and this is going at seventy six. There you go, mm, seventy six point two. Wow, goes mm. over again. Seventy three point seven. Seventy seventy five point nine. It's clearly a difference there, isn't it's clearly it? Clearly a difference there. So he turns the steps around to see what's uh, what's going down, or what's going to happen, and we've got. Uh, so 75.75, 74.1, so 73.9, there you go. So we are seeing basically that in the moonlight, it does seem to be cooler. 73.2. Consistently cooler, seems to be consistently cooler. 74.1. 74, 74.6, yeah. 74.8, 75 there. So if anyone was watching this video, they could quite easily consider that moonlight is actually 72 they could actually consider that moonlight is cooler M moonlight has a cooling effect there you go well we've we've it looks like we've we've done it is moonlight cold well the, well the answer is the answer according to uh the flat earth at man, uh, at man uh, flat flat earth sun moon and zodiac, zodiac clock, clock app, app uh, according to him that's absolutely correct you know the the yeah. didgeridoo is cooler mm. now um, I suppose it's uh, yeah. I suppose it's uh, quite a lot to even get your head around, really, yeah. especially if you want to isolate specifically the moonlight. Okay, mm. the moonlight. It's very difficult to isolate the moonlight. Mm. Okay, because you can't literally go up there and switch it off. Because you can't absolutely, you can't literally go up there and switch it off. Although you see, one but of the things he did factors. do that there are other, yeah, especially when there are other factors at work. In this demonstration mm. but one of the things that he does um, is that he waits for the moon to go behind a cloud or some cloud cover and then he takes the measurements again okay which I think is here so the yeah. moon's gone behind um, some cloud cover and he takes the measurements read the readings again so 75.5 75.7 75.7 and 75.5 so 75.9 yeah so he's getting kind of like with the moon behind the cloud he's getting very consistent results across the whole um area of the ladders yeah and a lot of people would put two and two together and come up with five and uh say oh well there you go you know that's that's the moon that's the moon's got a cooling effect there oh, as far as i'm concerned no, no it can be either one or two things Depends how sure. you want to look at it. Yeah, it could either be does uh, that the moon have a, the, it's clear that the moon has a cooling effect, or you could say it's clear that cloud cover and a cloth cover have a warming effect. Absolutely, of course. Yeah, and it's all about heat release from from objects in a given a certain environment. And then, you've got, to, and then you've got to wonder which which is which. Yeah, could could it be the st the step ladder was able to in the moonlight uh, that part of the step ladder was able to release heat, whereas the ladder that was in the shade wasn't able to release heat. You know, you've got you've got to you know you've got to you know you've got to look at it from all sides. But um, mm. now Harmon um, uh, some while ago gave us a link to some t tests that he's carried out himself and he t he he gave us a, uh, a link to these videos short videos only two minutes about two minutes average um, where he's got um, he lays out stones 
by his truck and um, he basically measures the, the temperature of the stones using his laser thermometer. Some are placed out um, out in the open ground, some are placed under the tailgate or of his truck or even under his truck. Okay, so some are in moonshade mm. and some are in moonlight. Now, I think I think you know. So he did quite a few variations to uh, the uh, to the to the test. He was moving the stones around um, every now and again, and blah blah blah, putting some from under the tailgate into the open air open ground and putting the ones in the open ground under the tailgate you know swapping things around but he was getting kind of the consistent results um that uh basically led him to conclude after all this that uh, this is his last video um i finally uh, quit complaining to myself and and in other people's chats who did this test and did it myself after the first 20 minutes, I knew it was not going to come out like the like all the other videos made on the moon having a cooling effect. So in other words, basically, Harmon didn't get the results that other people had got, like um, the Sun and Moon Zodiac sign uh, app, app. Talk app person. He didn't get it at all. Yeah, because what probably Harmon is, is identifying is the warming effect from his truck. It's the warming effect from his truck. truck. Yeah, so so we could we could basically turn it around, and say that there's more of a warming effect going on rather than a cooling effect. effect. Yeah, because because we actually have done this ourselves. Actually, we've taken out our thermal imaging camera and we've tested out on the on the on the bike path. Um, couple of tin cans. Couple of tin cans. Put them in the moonlight. Put them uh, in, in shade. shade. Um, we we didn't get any any results that we could say are is significant at all. No, you know we we just can't do it. Um, so you know we're we're, we're like Harmon. You know mm. we are like Harmon. We're thinking well, you know. No, but, but, but all it highlights is that there's yeah, there you go. There's another dichotomy in man's in the flat Earth community now. Absolutely, of course. Is yeah. it a cooling effect or is it a warming, warming effect? Effects? Absolutely, of course. Now, one of the things that we'd like to say about this video, oh, before we say anything, I've got to remember that all those materials in his setup, you've got the step ladders are probably made out of aluminium, I'd yeah. imagine. Aluminium. aluminium, yeah, probably. Well, probably could be pressed steel. But he's also got a cloth there, and a the cloth is a lot warmer. You know, material. Oh, material. It's a yeah, lot warmer. Yeah, all objects than. have a certain specificity with regard to heat. Yeah. Internal heat. Yeah. You know, and a lot of people don't really understand heat anyway. I mean, do you know what heat actually is? Mm. I don't. You, you know, want to draw it. Would you like to draw it? Absolutely. If you can draw, well, you'd probably draw a fire, wouldn't you? If you had to draw yeah. heat. But that's but that's not. But anyway, but it's it's very similar to the Cavendish experiment with uh, the the balls. The balls. In the, all the objects being attracted to, to each, each other. other, yeah, because Cavendish noticed noted that the 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 objects were the spherical objects were attracted to each other because of heat. Yeah, absolutely. Well, that was a that was a variable Cavendish couldn't eliminate from his uh, demonstration. So in this, I, I'd like to think: well, would he have gotten the same results if he'd have used um, a sheet steel? Sheet of steel, steel as a as a shield as a shield as a moon shade mm. shade, sure yeah and other, other, piece, piece uh, other than a, than a towel because we all tend to think that well it's all the same it's got to be all the same because look it's out there in the middle of in the cold it's do you know what I mean it's got to all be the same temperature surely sure yeah but one thing that a lot of people fail to realise and uh, one thing that's got we've got to mention and that is these uh, laser thermometers only measure the surface temperature. They don't measure the internal temperature of the of the object. They they don't do that. They'll only measure the surface temperature, so that can be quite fooling. Mm. So in other words, you can you can zap your thermometer all over the place and think, oh, everything's the same temperature. But uh, inside, internally, these these materials are there's di there's a lot of differentiation in temperature. Yeah. But one of the things that we'd like to point out about this video as well. And that is the, 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 the difference of the temperature 
um, of the uh, readings in moonlight and when the moon was in uh, covered up by cloud, cloud mm. cover, when yeah. there was cloud cover. Because everybody should know, and that is when there's, um, in order to see moonlight, you have to have a clear area of the sky. Yeah, okay, you've got to read with that, haven't you? Mm. And cloud cover, okay, preventing moonlight from anyone seeing moonlight provides a blanket. Yeah? Yeah. So it will trap the heat. A bit like the cloth. A bit like the cloth. cloth. Yeah. So it's Absolutely. going to be warmer, isn't it? So let's, one, so let's have a little mm. look. So 75 here, he's got on the ladder. And he's got on, on this side here. Oh, I think that was, wait there, let's go back a bit further. 75, 60, 72. 72. So in moonlight, the warmest temperature that he got on this ladder was 75 from from that little bit. Let's go, yeah, let's go further back let's be, well, before he changes it around. Or we could go further back. So you've got 75 points. Oh, he's changed it over. 75, 74.1. I should have started it. Wait there, let's start it. Let's go back to the very beginning. 73.9. 76. 76.2. 73.7. 76.75.9. Okay. And then he turns, so 75.9, so that's 76, isn't it? <clears throat> so um, when the moon um, was in, which is here, this is when the moon went into cloud cover. Got 73. 75. 75.7, 76. Hmm. So you're getting, you are generally getting slightly warmer temperatures. Hmm. Only slightly warmer temperatures, yeah. 75.9. But at the end of the day, is it a cooling effect or is it a warming effect yeah. being in the shade? Huh. Absolutely. You, you know, you've got really got to think about, you know, what's what's actually going down. Um, what's actually going down with this Come stuff, on. you know. And to be fair, how can anyone prove that it's the moonlight, the light, when nobody knows what light is? Yeah, I, mean, I don't know what light is, you know. Yeah, well, Do you? Let's not, let's not, you know, let's not, let's and, not. No, nobody can contest the actual moonlight. <laughs> oh, well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, it, remind, it reminds me of Thrive and Survive pointing his... Oh, right, his, his thermal... His laser, laser thermometer. pointer at the moon. At the moon, yeah, sure. And, yeah, and you think, you know... But, I mean, the, the... Well, as far as I'm concerned, I've not seen anything conclusive. I think, um, I think we'd stick with our... Um, we're not saying it's wrong... We're not saying it's wrong no. at all. Well, from what I gather, is it a cooling effect by the given off by the moon, or is it a warming effect by being in the shade? Absolutely, of course. Absolutely, of course. So we we left a comment. Hi, I'm having a hard time accepting this moonlight is cool claim, especially when I've used my thermal imaging camera and got nothing significant, which yeah. is true. That's that's absolutely true. There is clearly something making a difference in your demonstration because obviously there is a difference in the readings mm. along the length of the, the ladder. But but I think it needs more testing to substantiate the claim. It's the moonlight that's making the difference. difference yeah. The moonlight itself. So, mm. There are other variables at work like atmospherics, temperatures, temperature of the air around, yeah, for example. Yeah, that's yeah, another yeah. thing that uh, has to be taken into account. And um, but I think needs more testing. In other words, do it with different materials, different locations, because that's what people should be doing. Mm -hmm. They yeah, should basically. be doing. They should be changing their um, their uh, their, uh, yeah. their demos around. And like Harm and, and ourselves, you know, we didn't get anything conclusive at all. We, what you know, we actually went out, recorded it, thinking that we could. Put, include it in a in a video, but we we didn't we come back empty-handed as it were, yeah. so we didn't upload yeah. it. No worries, come on. So come you on. Know. Too often. Well, thanks Harmon for that. Yeah, thanks Harmon. Thanks Jeremy for for that lot. But uh, so it's, it's 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 an open book really. I mean, yeah, you know, or is it a cooling effect from the moon, or is it a warming, warming effect, effect from the objects from casting a shadow? shadow? Absolutely, yeah, from the ob surrounding objects. Yeah, from the surrounding the environment. Yeah, basically, absolutely, of course. So uh, that's a question for you guys. Out is there, it black or is it white? Absolutely, of course. Does a zebra have 
is white with black stripes or is it black with white stripes? Sure, absolutely, of course. Is this is this my left hand or is or is this my right hand? Yeah, kind it's, of thing. It's, it's the same kind of uh, kind of argument, and you can never find out. Absolutely, yeah, of course, yeah, you can you can never find anyway. out. So, absolutely. So there you go. What's next then, Peter? Uh, recycling. Here we go. Uh, recycling. Yeah. Where are Very we now? Quickly, oh, recycling. There. Now this guy is has got a lot of. Um, got a lot of motherboards graphics cards and everything what he wants to do is smash them all to pieces yeah and he wants to extract all the metals from these parts so if you if you move it forward he sure. puts he puts it all in his little machine that's there wait right there i'm Feed, sure yeah he's got his little shaker table going shaker and, table and they you show I'm trying to find a bit where he's got it, where he's feeding it, it all in. Then. Was it before then? Yeah. yeah oh, there, there, there he is, yeah. He's feeding it into his... Uh, yeah, because this is what they use Grinding for, it all up. For some ores. Pulverising it. The... Uh, lead. What's the, what's the ore? Lead ore. Lead ore. Um, oh. Galenite, isn't it? Ga that? Galena. Galena. That's what they use for galena. Crush the ore up. Crush the ore up and do this. But here he's using... Computer parts. Yeah. Now, my question is, is it, the title of the video is all about recycling. Recycling, recycling gold, gold and computer scrap. But is he really recycling the parts? Because in my understanding, he's actually just, he's not reusing the the chips that are on those motherboards. Well, he's not making new motherboards with it and new, new, new components that were... So, yeah, all he's sort of doing is just smashing them up. But what's important is that he's got to use energy in order to convert, say, all the all the the tailings from this process into something, a product, something useful. He's got to use energy. Yeah, sure. So, in my understanding, to me, he's not recycling anything here. Yeah, sure. Because he's having to use energy in order to reuse the materials. Yeah. So, what you're saying is, is that um, it's more of a manufacturing process, and his computer components are just his uh, raw material. Yeah, but all he's, all, yeah, all yeah. he's creating in this process is creating raw materials. That's all he's doing. Yeah, he's just creating the but raw he's not materials. not recycling anything. Yeah, yeah, I would totally agree with you there. But uh, you know, let's know what you think. Do you think he's yeah. are you recycling or what? I mean, it, oh, I don't. I mean, the amount of rubbish that he's actually doing. Well, I think he's just doing rubbish things. He's obviously bored with his life. I mean, here he's melt. He's got got a molten. Uh, oh, he's molt. He's he's, he's, he's melted down all the all the all metal. metal. Sure. So you got a lot of um, solder, a lot of copper. Do you know what I mean? A lot lead. of um, lead. There's oh, a bit of lead. Probably some gold there because they use gold in com computer components anyway, circuit board components, but. Um, you tend to think, you know, but what's he doing? You know, I mean, yeah. what's the, you know, hasn't he got anything else better to do in his time? Time, yeah. Got well, to spend some time with his wife. And how long would that take? What about spending some time with his kids? Oh, right, what yeah. about the dog? Take the dog for a walk. walk. Yeah, I know, yeah. Oh, that's uh, that black stuff that's on the bottom. That's the that's all the flux and all the... Oh, um, I've got it, yeah, sure. Yeah. Stuff that's hardened. Yeah, what sure. What he's producing there, because a lot of that is tin from the uh, solder. Yeah, sure. Solder. I don't know. And other alloy metals, yeah, yeah they, use, they use different materials for. Uh, um, anyway, it'll be there solid. forever. Yeah, so no, even, and even, now he's got to separate all of the the metals from his little chunks here, you know. And you think, well, you know, it's a lot, of, a lot of time and hassle. Yeah, and what, know, what's yeah. he going to do? Do you know what I mean? I don't know. It's just you know, makes you wonder what people actually get up to in in their time. And I mean, here's, here's a computer little printout display. Telling him, beam. telling him what he's got. Yeah, right. Yeah, tell him what he's got in his. Well, he's bit. got more copper and tin in that than anything. There you go. Oh, yeah, he's got copper, zinc, CU and tin, seventy-two, and tin. tin. Yeah, twelve point nine five. Yeah, lead. Where's the gold? AG. Basically nothing. You know, hardly anything. Point two three nine. I mean, what are you, you going to do, do with, with that? Point yeah. two three nine percent of gold. Yeah, I know. <laughs> make make a little stud earring. Yeah, I know. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Or something. You know what I mean? But anyway. I was going to say, uh, things please little minds. 
Little things. Play. Little little things. things plays please, little mind. Sure. I mean, I suppose, you know, keeps him out, at... out of trouble, though, doesn't it? Yeah. Stops him uh, getting into fights down at the bar, you know. Yeah, I know, but my point really was, like, how much energy is he wasting? In doing what he's in doing. In doing what he's doing. Yeah, sure, yeah. And it, you, we, uh, we we all hear about this carbon footprint, yeah. reducing the carbon footprint and reducing the yeah. greenhouse gas we emissions of CO2. Yeah. And, yet, you know, the, the guy here, for example, is one of millions, millions of people yeah. who are just wasting fuel, fuel yeah. wasting resources yeah. in I, order I to do something should... that... We should grass him up to Extinction Rebellion. Should, should, yeah, should yeah. you reckon we should? Yeah, sure. I'm sure he's American. Maybe they've got an oh, insu- he, Insulate America. Oh, they, they might do, yeah. They might have Insulate. We can ins- grass him up. He's gone all circular. He's gone all so, circular. Yeah, well, that's it now. Anyway, anyway he's gone circular now. So, Don't know, so that's that, that let one. Know what oh, you there think. he is. Let us know what you think in the comment yeah. below. Sort out your carbon footprint, footprint mate. Yeah. Stop wasting, stop wasting energy. Absolutely. Stop wasting energy. Gee, yeah. And it's get crazy. yourself a shave. <laughs> anyway, there yeah, we go. So what's next then, Peter? Well, we're on our main topic. Are we on our main topic? Beyond, yeah, beyond, lies, beyond, beyond science, science lies the real world. Yeah, of course. Mm. Well, that's absolutely true. You know, science comes out with all this rubbish. Claims, facts, scientific facts, claims and everything. And yet at the end of the day, a lot of them can't be proved to be true at all. No. So you've got to ask yourself, well, perhaps they're not true at all. Yeah. And they're just made up from the imagination. Well, it's just an idea. Uh, just ideas, because man doesn't really know what nature really is, does he? No. He doesn't He doesn't know what a pebble on a beach is. No, it's just there. It's just there. How and did he's he given get there? It, you know, he's given it a name. A he, pebble. He's given it a name, a pebble, but, but he can't even make one. Yeah, I know. He can't make a pebble. No. He can't make a pebble. He can't. He can't make a cloud. He can't make the sun. He can't make, uh, he doesn't know what the sun is, doesn't know what air is, doesn't yeah. know what water is. Yeah. In our understanding. In, in our view, anyway, of course, yeah. And if you think we're wrong, we're going to ask you for proof of that. We're going to just ask you for proof. Yeah. Come on. You ain't going to get it. Yeah. Well, you ain't going to, yeah, you won't find it. You won't be able to give it to us anyway. Yeah, but, here. Uh, we'll quickly go up on, uh, get the uh, comments up on, um, get the comments up on that. Uh, on what? On get the comments up. Why right here? No. Where were? On the I bell. Don't... The bell icon. Oh, the bell icon. Get the comments up. Oh, right. there's, uh, oh, there's Mark. 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 Just click on that. Yeah. Now this guy, we 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 left a comment on. Uh, oh, this is uh, a video done by FTFE. Fight the flat earth. Fight the flat earth. And like. We 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 wrote it well ten eleven months ago and it's wow it's us has anybody, has anybody got any proof water is hydrogen and oxygen or air has constituents of nitrogen oxygen argon and CO two yeah come on our channel and show us what you haven't got, got yeah, yeah we're, we're up, up for, for debate. debate on these topics anytime yeah welcome to man's world where his understanding of the natural environment is one big fabrication yeah, and like we got just made up. 416 replies don't really go into read all because it's a waste of time. But this Mark just left a few comments, you know, and yet it, we're, we're, we're asking him, how could Nicholson and Carlyle in 1800, for example, have determined that when, they put, splits. To, hold on, that when they put together their voltaic pile, which is, was the new technology at the time, a battery, when they put together their voltaic pile and put a piece, a drop of water on the top and then put a couple of electrodes on it they saw bubbles coming off from each electrode but how do they know that the gas products were coming from the water and not the materials that were placed in the water yeah absolutely of course. they could, could never have done that they like, never absolutely yeah and yet some people think that they did and like yeah. it's crazy hey, it's absolutely insane you know it's, it's absolutely insane what yeah, people anyway. actually think so, and click, stuff click, click this guy off but uh, so anyway, we're going to mainly talk about CO2, aren't we? CO2, as like of the course. guy at the beginning of the video thinks that CO2 is a constituent of the air. Yeah, we've got to play this again. Wait there, let's have a little look. Let's have a little look. Wait there. Uh, where did he say it? Yeah, here. Was it here at the beginning here? Let's have a little listen to this. It's a thin layer of gases called the atmosphere. It holds in the air we breathe and protects us from the cold of outer space. 
When energy in the form of light reaches us from the sun, it streams through Here. an Earth's blanket is called carbon dioxide, or CO2. Carbon dioxide is everywhere on Earth, actually, and it's an important part of Earth's delicate balance of life. It's what animals, including us, exhale after they breathe in oxygen. Right, so even, 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 that can't, even that doesn't make sense because it, it, he's saying he's talking about the carbon dioxide, a uh, carbon, carbon dioxide, cycle, carbon cycle, carbon cycle, and yet what? What a lot of people can't. One of the uh, arguments for cl climate change deniers that they put forward, and that is, if there was CO two in the atmosphere, it would be absorbed by the trees because of photosynthesis. Yeah, no, yeah, sure. So it, do yeah. it doesn't make sense, does it? But the, the the main point here is basically he's saying that there's carbon dioxide everywhere. Yeah, you know? basically, yeah. It's, everywhere. it's everywhere. And the animation here at the beginning, you know, you see the little picture. There's CO two drawn over there. You know, that people saying that CO two is in the atmosphere. Okay, come on, let's, let's let's put that to the test. Come on, <clears throat> and even we've got to get this bloke up. Where's our Where's our little bloke? Oh, this and this bloke here as well. Oh, well, yeah. We've we've got to bring him back on for oh, a, right. a, on. a guest appearance. So let's just listen to this. What do you reckon his name is? Can you tell me what would happen if I were to keep this glass of water in the open air for some days? It will become acidic. Did you ask how? Air contains carbon dioxide, and this will dissolve in water to form carbonic acid. There you go. So even he's selling it. His name could be Ahmed. Oh, it could be, yeah. could be. Ahmed. Oh, um, but he's telling you, he's telling you that uh, there is carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. Yeah, that's what he's saying to you. Yeah. Okay. But we think he's lying. Well, let's put it to the test. Well, let's put it to the test then, okay. But I still think he's lying. Now, um, yeah, let's see what, let's show everyone what we did. Not that one, not that one. Here we go. Oh, this one. Now, this is a, a, a picture, an image of uh, some hydrogen carbon indicator solution. Uh, that was purchased, and we left it out on the twelfth of the eleventh, twenty one, which is at ten a.m. Mm. Um, that was it's about five, four, four and a half days ago. No, it's longer than that. It's about five days ago. Well, well, twelfth, seventeenth today. Okay, it's four and a half. We left it out for four and a half days before we finally tested it. Sure. Yeah, of course. Yeah, and as you, you take a note of the color, there's the yeah. color. Remember, it's in daytime there. Yeah. And here's the video that we did um, the other day. Mm. Yesterday. Okay, uh, there you go. So there, there it is, 12th of the 11th. That's when it was put up. And the vid this video was done yesterday. It was done in the evening time. So evening time. Could, that could account for the light, the yeah, variation of colour of the um, bicarbonate indicator solution. Yeah. And we have to say to people that when we first put the for the hydrogen carbon in, uh, indicator solution in this jar, we did a pH test on it, and it was seven. Yep, it was seven. Yeah, because it they uh, the company uh, would would sell it as uh, neutral. pH pH neutral, which would be seven. So we've got our digital um, uh, pH meter, which is very handy indeed. Isn't it? Yeah, I know, yeah. I don't know what we're doing with it, though, mind you. Wait there. There we go, wait there. Oh, yeah, we're just uh, calibrating it. We're using our pH7 indicator uh, solution. There we go. So there we go. Da dee dee da dee dee da 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 dee 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 Give me the moonlight. Give me the girl. So we got uh, we got it there. There you seven, go. There uh, seven. Seven. Pitch of seven. So that's fine. Boo, 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 boo. Yeah, I've got to admit, it's quite useful having a digital pH meter. Yeah, because you can't you can read the color wrong, can't you? Yeah. The pH indicator, the pH paper, litmus paper, you can read them wrong. Whereas a digital readout, you can't really. Well, there's no difference, is it? You, there's no, there's no quibble. Yeah, it's very acidic it's water. It's very acidic water from our from de our dehumidifier. Mm -hmm. of course. Now, so we've got, so we pop the probe in to the hydrogen bicarbonate indicator solution, and you can see that the pH is going up. Up. 
Uh, pumping away in my beautiful balloon. Now you should, everyone should know that uh, carbon dioxide dissolved in water to produce or an aqueous solution. The hydrogen carbonate is an aqueous solution. Okay, will lower pH. Okay, but our pH meter is going up. Oh, well, it's seven. not going down. Mm. So seven. So it's past the neutral mark. Mm. It's going up. And it's going up, and which means it, it's uh, more alkaline. Which means it's more alkaline, absolutely, of course. So, and it goes up all the way to seven point. Where well, we got up to a seven point five, oh. didn't we? So mm. something's seriously wrong. So that jar was left open to the atmosphere. Okay, it started off with a pH of seven, and now it's increased to pH seven point five. Yeah. Okay, but it shouldn't be that jar. That uh, solution of hydrogen carbonate indicator solution shouldn't be. And all, if you should have done that, if you get up the Wikipedia page on hydrogen carbonate in indicator like that. solution, yeah. here we go. Um, um, here's the Wikipedia it, page. It says here very clearly that the indicator. Um, oh, there, yeah, there. Oh, that one there. Yeah, there's also no, sorry. <sighs> the hydrogen carbonate indicator is a type of pH indicator that is sensitive enough to show a color change as the concentration of carbon dioxide gas in an aqueous solution increases. increases. Absolutely, of course. So, you know, it is also used to test carbon dioxide content during gaseous exchange of organisms. When the carbon dioxide content is higher than 0.04%, now that is phenomenally small, 0.04%. Mm. You know, this indicator solution will change. The initial red colour changes to yellow as the pH becomes more acidic. Yeah. The carbon dioxide content is lower than 0.04%. So it changes from red to magenta and then on to purple in very so, low yeah. concentrations. So let's have a look. So it's clear that there's no CO2 in the air. We can't detect CO2 in the air. Absolutely. Not with a pH of 7.5. Can't do it. Because a pH of a carbonic acid should have a pH of about 4.86. Absolutely, of course. So what we thought we'd do is that we'd actually show people what CO2 does to this bicarbonate indicator indicator solution mm. and use the co2 from our cylinder yeah. you know this is what we're going to do in other words whenever you want to get a, a, a result so you have to use a pure source of CO2. co2 absolutely of course so um remember this had a ph of 7.5 mm. this had a ph 7.5 the, the solution in this jar and we we should have put the probe in first but we didn't but we added some co2 to the uh, or you can just skimmy it through, can't you? Yeah, I'll just wait there. Hold on, there we go. And I think we actually put the probe, probe in, in after just yeah, afterwards because you wanted to put the probe in and introduce the gas at the same, same time. time so that people can get a visual on the pH on the lowering effects. on the effects of that CO2. Two. Yeah, so I mean, at the moment, I can't read it there. 6.54 we've got, um, if on there. 6. 6.59. 6.5 or 6.6. 6.6. Remember, it was 7.5. Yeah. And then we added a little bit of CO2, stopped, popped in the probe. Okay. And we're going to skim it now what we do is we, we reintroduce more CO2 into the solution. And we're getting 6.76. That's better. Look at that. 6.82. It's going up. It's going up to 7.1. Was, mm, uh, now it's yeah, coming down now. Now it's coming down. Look at that. Mm. 6.76 there. And look at also at the colour of the hydrogen carbonate indicator solution. It's actually turning yellow. Mm. So this is exactly what the Wikipedia page said. The Absolutely. information on there yeah. says, if you add CO2 to hydrogen carbonate indicator solution, it will turn yellow. Yeah. That's what we got. But we're actually using a pure source of CO2. CO2. That's the problem. Yeah. Because we... With some hydrogen carbon indicator solution open to the atmosphere, the CO2 should saturate into the solution yeah. and turn it yellow. But yeah. we didn't get that at all. It remained the same colour, more or less. So that tells me that there's no CO2 in the air. Naturally. Um, naturally, occurring. naturally occurring Around CO2. Here. The only time you're going to get CO2 in the atmosphere is when uh, man, you, man puts it up there. Yeah. Or in case you, or or if you have like a forest fire, I would imagine if you had a forest fire, that would oh. that would probably release some CO two. How do you know? Oh, sorry, yeah, CO two. If 
It's a bit like if you put some near a volcano. Or, if, or a volcano. But then you could be getting sulphur dioxide. Yeah, you could be getting sulphur dioxide or you could be getting small traces of carbon dioxide. I mean, I don't know. But at the end of the day, you know, but the thing is, is that with with regard to the atmosphere, is it possible a lot of these gases that are ejected up into the atmosphere, is it possible that they just dissipate and disappear forever in yeah. the atmosphere? Uh, you know, I mean, th that's the big question, you know, because... You know, we're trying to find or detect some CO two in our atmosphere. Our, uh, you know, round here, we can't we can't do that, no. can we? We can't no. do it at all. So it'd be quite useful to actually uh, use some this indicator and place it in various locations. Absolutely, of course. Yeah. So basically, to the air. Um, we've got to, we've got to say that this bloke here is talking a load of rubbish. He's talking bullshit. He's he's actually lying to people when he says this. Can you tell me what would happen if I were to keep this glass of water in the open air for some days? It will become acidic. Did you ask how? No. Yeah. No. All, no. All, all that's rubbish. All no. that's rubbish. We've just done it and it's gone more alkaline. We've, got, we've, we've, we've done it and it, the, our solution's gone more alkaline. Sorry. <clears throat> and we have also noticed that there is a significant change in the pH during the day. Oh, from well, morning yeah. time to yeah, night time, but, but, but overall it will remain the same. Yeah, but on that occasion we used the pH paper. Oh, did we use pH? Paper? Yeah, we haven't used. We've only used the P, the digital pH. Once. Oh, we haven't. We haven't used the digital meter. But we still seen sure. an increase. Sure. So <clears throat> you know, over four days. When, when absolutely so the the guy there this guy here talking rubbish talking rubbish talking bullshit and uh, this guy here you know rubbish when we talk about so when he when he talks about co2 and all this kind of stuff you know carbon dioxide that that blanket you know the carbon dioxide you know you've got to seriously question whether the information they're telling you is is true and reflects the real world because as far as I'm concerned, I don't think none of this reflects the real world at all. No. It's what they'd like, obviously. It's like a little story. Mm. It's to get people to it's to get people to be more conscientious about the environment and using using up resources. Yeah, basically. Because once you've used up resources, that's it. Gone. They're gone. You oh. can't you can't once you've burnt a lump of coal, you can't get it get all the bits yeah, anyway. back <clears throat> and make a new piece of coal and burn it again. Hmm. Anyway. Yeah, that's not how it works. <clears throat> anyway, are we meant to look at some someone's invention of carbon capture? Oh yeah, uh, just to finish off, yeah, we can just have a little look at uh, uh, Undecided with Matt Ferrell, and uh, it's probably great for confused people. This is hmm. his, his his YouTube channel. Yeah, but uh, yeah, Matt talks about uh, energy storage breakthrough, solid hydrogen explained. Now, the reason why we're having a little look at this is because we obviously think that water isn't h2o at all it's not made of hydrogen and oxygen and the hydrogen that is uh, liberated when people use electrolysis and other methods actually comes from the materials and this information actually does support that idea okay. that uh, materials can contain hydrogen hmm. and it's, and many years ago they thought of uh, uh, an element called phlogiston which was uh, which was released through uh, by which was released by like wood when you burn wood to create the flame released through combustion released yeah through combustion and that was phlogiston and we consider that the phlogiston is hydrogen or even Cavendish thought phlogiston was hydrogen didn't yeah. it and we would agree with that sure or agree with him so the hydrogen is contained within everything. This kept together. Let's put together. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Now the company would human beings, plants, salt, loads of things. Yeah. Metals. This this company are built. He talks about basically hydrogen storage, the current methods, and a lot of them are expensive. They're inefficient. A lot of them, you know, it's it's big. It's kind kind of a, a very troublesome area. Um, storing hydrogen and I'm just trying to think if we go on to there can we just play it from here or we'll just play we'll just play it from here okay so what's all the fuss about 
Well, Plasma Kinetics designed a nanophotonic filter that captures hydrogen onto an internal graphite-based structure at atmospheric pressure and ambient temperature. It's a whole lot to take in and digest there. Now, the device could extract metric tons per day of 99.9% .9 pure hydrogen directly from smokestacks and gas streams and turn it into a solid state. But how's that possible? Before I get to that, I'd like to thank Surfshark for sponsoring today's video. Okay. Yeah, what's interesting is that this guy thinks that there's hydrogen in the atmosphere. Yeah, well, yeah, he does think... He well, thinks... he's, he's only saying that they come from smokestacks. No, but he's saying that they're, they're extracting the hydrogen from those, from the atmosphere. But the hydrogen is actually in the materials they're using. They're, they're absolutely, yeah, yeah. And basically, Let's so behind, behind the science lies the real world the real world behind the science yeah so let's just carry on with this here we go listening yourself link in the description below and thanks to surfshark and to all of you for supporting the channel now back to how plasma kinetics breakthrough is even possible the secret behind this unbelievable invention seems to lie within their material that they used a multi-layer shape memory alloy or sma which is basically an alloy that remembers its shape once it's changed Typically, you can mold this material at low temperature and get it back to its original shape by heating it. While it might sound like plastic, SMAs are just a mix of two metallic compounds like nickel and titanium. Two common examples of SMA applications are mechanical actuators. But the SMAs, the nickel or the titanium, contain hydrogen. hydrogen. Absolutely, of course, yeah. And also, did you notice on that, that, the, that like metal leaf that has memory? Yeah. That's absolute rubbish. No metal has memory. You just manipulate it to bend this way or to bend oh, that, that way. way. Absolutely, of course, yeah. Because even he, he he said that it was affected by heat. Yeah. Oh, sure. Yeah. And he, he kind of like. That, oh, sorry. There is this bit about where he talks about um, the absorption. Because yeah, he's talking about metal hydrides. Oh, hydrides. Yeah, sure. Because a lot of, I mean, hydrogen basically can be absorbed by most materials anyway, can't it? Yeah, hydrogen can be absorbed. But you can actually, you, in, in our view, hydrogen is the binding material that holds, every, holds everything together. Mm. So if you've got material like a metal, you'll need the hydrogen to bind it all together. You know, this bit of, this bit of aluminium and that bit of aluminium needs hydrogen to, to, bend, to bond together. To bend. Mm. To bond together. And if you've got if you've got other things in your aluminium as well, like sodium, because there's sodium hexafluoroaluminate in aluminium, mm. you you need hydrogen to bind all of this stuff together. A lot of ores contain hydrogen. Graphite contains hydrogen. hydrogen yeah, you know, that's why hydrogen is considered to be the most abundant element in the universe, because you need it. It's the only binding material. Yeah. Absolutely, but uh, he goes on to and talk. Generally, um, it gets broken. It's released through pyrolysis and hydrolysis. Pyrolysis and yeah, absolutely by bur burning, combustion, yeah. or water. water. Water breaks it down, down. and yeah. it can release hydrogen. Absolutely, but let's just carry on. Uh, uh, he goes into. Um, we don't need to have a look at that, do we? Just a bit about the release. How does it get released? With a laser. With a laser, yeah. So let's just. That was. That was. Yeah, let's just go from here. Okay, there we go. Listening. Difference when you compare light activated hydrides to standard metal hydrides. The second type of materials also rely on reversible absorption for attaching their hydrogen atoms to the solid framework. But they need temperatures up to 200 degrees Celsius or 392 degrees Fahrenheit to release it. The company has described their device as a movie projector or a CD player. And whether in a cassette, a canister, or a disc, you just need to shine a laser light onto the hydrogen-filled film to release the guest star, which is the hydrogen. And that sounds spectacular, but how does it actually work? During the absorption cycle, the positively charged hydrogen atoms are attracted by the negatively charged sites within the film's nanopores. Because of the material photoactivity, when a laser hits the film, the light switches the polarity of the bond to positive, which frees the hydrogen atoms. That's the big benefit from their system. The desorption process occurs without yeah, the yeah. desorption process occurs without using a lot of energy. Yeah, but, but that's their understanding of it. My understanding of it would be that the laser is actually decomposing the CD, thus releasing the hydrogen. Surely, yeah, absolutely, of course. Yeah, thus releasing the hydrogen, yeah, of course. 
And but then you've got to think about well, how do you capture that hydrogen? Yeah, absolutely, of course. Yeah, because the point in putting it in there to begin with. Absolutely. Well, maybe you can put it in your lighter, as this CD disc in your lighter. Oh, well, yeah. You can, yeah. <laughs> every time you want to light a smoke. Yeah. Energy storage breakthrough. But, uh, mm. but I suppose the whole point of the video basically tells us that hydrogen can be stored and can exist within materials. Yeah. Okay. And you know yeah, why thanks, people man. think why people think it comes from water. I mean, it's because they're mad. It's absolutely. Because it's because the science wants people to think it's in water because water's abundant. Water's abundant, and it, it, it lots of it. Yeah, and people can think that there's fuel. We, we won't have any energy yeah, pro problems. problems. Yeah. Well, I suppose that's one. Re that's one reason why yeah. it's good to have the hydrogen in the water. Because there, there's plenty yeah, of water. Anyway, so Water's but bounty. I thought you were going to show me the uh, that CO two capture. Oh right, Not yeah, of course. Oh, that's one. That's another one. Yeah, sure. Then anyway. so just to finish off, um, just to finish off, we've got this. Now we'll go back to the CO two in the atmosphere. Now we think that there isn't any at all. Yeah, you know, there isn't. There's none at all, unless uh, it's put up there by either smokestacks, combustion. Yeah. <laughs> A natural forest fire, or whatever. But that's that's not saying that the the, that the CO two from smokestacks and forest fires will remain up. Will there. remain up there. Absolutely, it'll probably disappear and be long forgotten. Absolutely, of course. But I managed to get onto this video by Karthik DM, and carbon capture technology machine. Here we go, machine to reduce CO two pollution level in atmospheric air. But really, he's in the wrong place because this needs to be at the term this, outside. This needs to be outside a. A factory, doesn't it? Yeah. I mean, ideally, but he's got a two wax. He's got a computer fan there. Um, and drawing in there. Drawing in there. Wait there. Let's have a little butchers. Has go, he, go. he got any hydrogen carbon indicator solution in there? Oh no. So he's got. Uh, yeah. The the computer fan draws in the air, goes the the air flows down into the tub, and there's that little. He fills it up with water. Or a solution of sodium hydroxide, one of the two. Yeah. And um, basically, so it soaks up into the cloth. Yeah, soaks up the cloth, the yeah, water. Yeah. Okay. Oh, and it acts like a, a film. Yeah. Well, the water will absorb the carbon dioxide anyway. Yeah. Well. Yeah. So whether it's got whether it's probably it's probably neat water, and not sodium hydroxide, hydroxide solution, because yeah. you can just use neat water. Yeah. So um, the air goes in down hits the water, the carbon dioxide dissolves in the water and the air comes out the other end. He's putting something in there. Yeah, he's putting some so sodium hydroxide. Right. Yeah, he's putting in some like sodium sort of hydroxide. Together. Yeah. Sorry, yeah, he has put in sodium hydroxide. He's filled it up quite a lot, hasn't he? Absolutely, yeah, sure. But the, the, the water will soak up the cloth. Yeah. And uh, we'll, we'll watch it in, a in action here. He's got it. Yeah, I switched it on there. Wait there, you should see it there. There yeah, I switched on. See oh, the right, bubbles yeah, there? Yeah, so the airflow is making bubbles on the surface. And the air comes out the other end, you know. But the thing is, is that I look at this. I look at this and think, but where's the CO2? You know, where's the CO2? Oh, right, yeah. You know, but if he had a jar of bicarbonate, hydrogen bicarbonate uh, indicator solution there on, on the worktop, it would it, the pH would go up, yeah. indicating there's no CO two on the on mm. the in the air. Yeah. You know, I mean, <laughs> you can give all these little. You know, little it's crazy. You can give all these pieces of uh, of his apparatus some fancy names, and he can apply for some funding. Absolutely, yeah. I know, yeah. Oh, although he's got fans on both sides. Where's the um, air flow coming out then? Having a clue. Oh right, yeah. I'm just trying to think. But. Uh, you know, oh, they're two. I think they're two separate ones. I don't know, but uh, you know, it makes you think what the, what these people. Well, are that's all up they're to. going to be doing is they're going to be drawing air, and then cleaning it. To, um... Oh, it's got. Uh... It's got like oh, a bubbler. Oh, pipe. 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 Oh, yeah, he's got a little bubbler there. Oh, isn't yeah, the air's drawn in, and it comes out there and through the water. Okay. Yeah. yeah sure. But, uh, yeah, you can see the point of it, yeah. But, yeah. you know, what is the point of it, you know, when yeah. there's no CO2? I mean, if this was near a, 
um, factory. Factory. I mean, it'd be great. Coal mine. But the but you. I suppose if you had it near a smokestack, your your water's going to get uh, yeah. Dirty so anyway, isn't it? They could have used Over a of time. they could have used devices like this to have cleaned the air down in coal mines. Um, oh, they could have done, yeah. They could have done, yeah. Oh, well, that would have prevent fire damp and all that kind of yeah. stuff. Yeah, they could have done. They could have done that. But um, yeah, sure. But you know, oh well, uh, you game. know, something to do, I suppose. Well, absolutely, of course. Yeah, I bet he'll put a pattern on that as well. well yeah, go down the stick to the devil. go down the Indian pattern. What the comments like? What the comments been like? Comments, uh, comments are. Please, can we have the full tutorial on how, how to, to build, build it? it? You should do this inside a small closed environment alongside a CO two meter and record the results on video, just to prove the concept. Oh, yeah, now, I, yeah. I totally agree with that at all. But you can have some bicarbonate indicator solution. Yeah. You know? Oh, because all it is just a carbon scrubber. That's all it is. It's a bit similar to what they have in a, a submarine. Oh, absolutely, similar. of course. You know. Oh, because that, that really, you could call that, that's just a scrubber. scrubber. Yeah, that's all it is. That's all it is, yeah, sure. But uh, okay. anyway, there we Can go. Can you see one of the astronauts carrying one of those on their backpacks? On their backpacks? Yeah, oh, to sure. scrub the, the CO2 from the breath. Oh, right, yeah, of course. Yeah. Oh, it's all rubbish, isn't it? Yeah. Anyway. anyway, there we, there go. we go. So that, that's it, really. So, yeah, 5.39 we got on that. And uh, the it was y totally yellow, wasn't it? Yeah. There we go. That, oh, well, I think yeah. we can get a good uh, shot of that. Yeah, in focus, wait there, when it comes into focus. There we go. There, Mild. nice and yellow. Yeah. So, you know, the hydrogen indicator, bicarbonate indicator solution worked well okay. in the presence of CO2. Two. Absolutely, yes. When we know there's CO2 there, it's because we've got a canister of it and we're, you know. Yeah. But uh, when we've got some on the windowsill or yeah. let's put some outside next door, uh, next door next week. Yeah, push it outside the window. You know, we, it won't change. We should get, I suppose, color, color, colorimetric tubes. Oh, well, they use oh, I know. pump and pump it. Yeah, well, yeah, could do. But again, that's based on salt, salt acid. That's all. Absolutely, of course, yeah. And yeah. we're we're still waiting for proof that uh, well, carbon, that, so carbon dioxide, show that sodium hydroxide. Carbon yeah. dioxide has got. Um, Go on, just sorry, show yeah, it. we're still waiting for proof that carbon dioxide has got the one part carbon and two parts oxygen. Yeah. If you yeah. if you've got any out there, you know, we'd love to see it because we don't think it's got carbon in it at all. Oh, carbon comes from combustion. Yeah. And know, it's yeah. black. Yeah. You know. Yeah, I know. Anyway, no, we've got a little treat for for those people who've who've managed to stay throughout the the video for this long. Oh, okay. Very short time lapse footage yeah. of. There we go, I'll play uh, it now. A piece of, on the left-hand side is uh, a piece of sodium metal placed on 32 leaves of aluminium. Yeah. On the right-hand side is the same amount in weight of sodium hydroxide, of sodium hydroxide placed on 32 leaves of aluminium metal. Yeah, sure. Yeah, we're, we're just trying to work out whether we can notice the difference between sodium metal and all the sodium hydroxide formed when sodium metal is dissolved in water and the sodium hydroxide that's actually purchased yeah but this would you don't yeah but what this shows is that they're exactly the same simply because they yeah. both contain hydrogen and they both contain oxygen absolutely of course yeah because the the sodium is metallic yeah and you know in the center in the core it's metallic Sodium hydroxide, drain cleaner, whenever you put it in water, it heats up. And if you fill the container that it's in, the container feels warm. It's because it contains oxygen. Oxygen. N-A. N-A. O-H. O. O means oxygen. Uh, and the and oxygen time. generally yeah, sure. means that there's heat been applied in the process. So so what we're going to do is that we've we've left them, uh, we've, we've stopped the... Uh, so if you get the, the time gaps. lapse, and we um, we we le we've left them to uh, deteriorate even more with the aluminium. Yeah. So if you get the sketch, the diagram of the chloralkali process. Oh, here we go. Very oh, quick. I wonder why I've had that page on there. Chloralkali process. People can understand our our way of thinking. Um, yeah, Wikipedia. Oh, that, 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 that's, that's the one. Just want to show a diagram to people. Because in the chloralkali process, how they this make one here. chlorine gas, they also make hydrogen as well. They actually uh, pass through, continually pass through um, 
brine, brine seawater and electrolyze in an electrolytic process and electrolyze the solution. And what they say, mainstream chemistry says that what the solution that's left or that's drawn off from it is sodium hydroxide, which is indicated on the bottom right, right. NaOH. Now, in our understanding, that is not NaOH because... But it, but it can't be the same NaOH that is bought from the shop. As your drain cleaner. As your drain cleaner, because it's 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 lacking processing. It needs still needs to be processed. Yes. Mm. So it's got to have different properties. Yes. Yeah. And that's the whole point why we're, t why we're playing around with our sodium hydroxide yeah. and sodium metal so if there's any difference what what we what we intend plan to do is to um, do some electrolysis using um, NaCl sodium chloride solution draw off the chlorine draw off the hydrogen and we're left with a, in their understanding a sodium hydroxide solution and we're going to place some of that solution oh, yeah. in on aluminium. Some aluminium. To, and it should react in the same manner as sodium hydroxide that's bought. That you've just seen. That you've just seen, yeah, of course. Yeah. But we don't think it will oh, that, yeah, react that's in the same manner, simply because it's inactive. Yeah, it's, 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 uh, it's been leached. It's been leached. It's been soaked in water, and the water's broken it down yeah. through the process with the help of the electricity. So, you know, you know we've got to... Where, where where on earth it gets the oxygen hydrogen from? I mean, I don't know. From the prilling plant. Yeah, but in here, yeah, in, in yeah, here, absolutely. where it gets the oxygen from, and even the hydrogen, I mean, I don't know. Because in our, in my understanding, what's left in this, what should be drawn off, is just a sodium oh, that's, hydrate. That's a good idea. I do like that idea. We sodium just, hydrate. We'll, we'll do that. Yeah, of course. We'll have to just have to filter off the carbon. If we use graphite electrodes, we'll have to just filter off the graphite. Yeah, basically. Filter yeah. it off, yeah. so we're just left with uh, the sodium hydroxide yeah oh, of course yeah but that's something for us to do there and another go. time what's happening there there we go that's great so that's it really you know there that's you it so wonderful wunderbar 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 wonderful there stuff go. from uh pete and pete and uh i hope that clears up uh, quite a lot of things I'm, I'm sure whether we go out into the moon light and do some further testing or something i think we might do yeah well it's like harmony if you you hear about people talking about it, and you think, "Well, I've got to do it myself to find out." Yeah, you've got to do it yourself to find out. But, but what's interesting with Harmon is that he used natural materials, materials like rocks. Absolutely, yeah. Well, you should be using natural materials, really. Even I would agree with that. You should be using well, natural yeah. materials rather than well, man-made, or, or use a variety. Use a variety. Yeah. Oh, I suppose, yeah, yeah. Anyway, change everything around. Yeah, of course. But obviously, it's, it's an area that still needs uh, more investigation. I suppose. So there you have it. So always remember till next time. Oh. If something doesn't make sense, like CO2 in the air. Absolutely. CO2 being a constituent of the air, even though 0.04% of the air is CO2. Or it's said to be. It's said to be CO2. Absolutely, of course, yes. Or thinking that water's H2O, hydrogen and oxygen. Or even thinking, well, even thinking there's nitrogen in the air and oxygen. Absolutely, and of course. And what was, the, what was the one that mm. bloke, what was the one that bloke said, um, who we were talking to? Can't remember it now. Bloke. I didn't. I didn't remember it the last time, and I said, "Yeah, oh, is that bloke mentioned it? He thought uh, he considered something." Oh no! I've forgotten. Sorry, I don't know what he's talking. Yeah, about. never mind. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, if you thought that the Queen has has n no power over Parliament at all, yeah. you know, even the Lords, you know. Yeah, I know. Yeah. You know. Absolutely, of course, yeah. And also that the, the, the royal family are patrons to most organisations in the country. Mm. You know, yeah. Women's Institute, uh, the FA. Yeah. What else have we got? Uh, All loads of things. Absolutely, lo lots of charities and organisations. The patrons are the royal family. Yep. They're the top people yep. of a lot of these organisations, you know. But it's crazy what the way people think. Yeah, absolutely, because there's a yeah. lot of old nonsense about it, isn't there? Mad. Yeah, it, mad, you've got a lot of nonsense for mad people. people. Mm -hmm. Nonsense and rubbish feeds mad people. Yeah. You can feed mad people nonsense and bullshit. Mm -hmm. Here, come over here, come over here, Roger, have some bullshit, mm -hmm. have some nonsense. Yeah, they'll lap it up. Absolutely, of course, yes. It's all rubbish, isn't it? Of course. All, so, all add to their demise when they get dementia. Absolutely, of course, yes. So thanks so much, and we'll see you next, next time. time. Okay. Bye. Tell
The earth isn't round, it's flat. How do you know? I've observed it in all my travels over Europe. It's flat, everywhere it's flat.